The sun is ever present. The sun may go through a cycle. The sun may come closer and farther away. The sun may hide behind clouds. It may hide its tilt, but it is always within our solar system. It is always within our sphere. It is ever present, ever providing vital heat to the planet. You have a sun within you, and that is your solar plexus. That is your sense of personal power. And it is time to realize that it is yours to claim, that it has never left you. And we, in this video, are going to be talking about my nine step process to success to claiming your power. Let's go. Okay, so what is power? Humans need to realize that we have been programmed away from our own power. The way that we live in society, the things that have been programmed with innocence birth from culture, from our government, all of it has in many ways become a program against free will, against our own power, against our own sovereignty, and also away from one of the most powerful assets within a human being, which is tribe, which is resource in a healthy way. It is powerful to know that you're a sovereign being and to create boundaries and free will around that. And it is also equally as powerful to build tribe. And on one side of the globe, we have toxic tribe that is enmeshing with us and taking our free will and our sovereign power away, making us feel really closed in. And then on the other side of the globe, we have isolation like never before with single family households and literally one person living situations. It's a mess because people feel like they have to be independent, they have to do it all on their own. And this is just not sustainable to a human being. We are a tribal species. And so no wonder we are feeling powerless First of all, the system that the government presents to us, that society presents to us is not sustainable anyways. This nine to five, pay all your bills by yourself, do everything on your own. It's not a sustainable way to be thriving. When we have tribe, we can share tasks. We can share costs that we can all benefit from and equally pay over to. When we have tribe, we have people that are better at one thing and enjoy one thing more and we're better at another thing and we enjoy another thing more. And all over, it just becomes a more symbiotic system, just like the jungle, just like biodiversity, just like symbiosis in nature. It is something that is everybody has a role and we're all working together and the one benefits the whole and the togetherness benefits the whole and everybody is more abundant because of it. Let's break down some more specific things when it comes to power. The sun is within you. It has never left you. It is just about building a relationship to it. It is not about going outside yourself and finding it. It's not about listening to some spiritual teacher talk about it. It is about you in your everyday physical life building a relationship to it. And some of the most powerful ways to build a relationship to our sense of personal power is to actually make changes in our life, is to actually take action in our life, is to actually, and not just blind action, but smart action, is to actually first connect to our sense of personal power and to then find small ways or big ways or medium sized ways, whatever ways you can, to bring about something that we desire, to discern our free will and to act on our free will in a situation. The more connected to your power that you are, the more access you will have to this inner sun, the more you will know how to come back in and find where it is in any given situation. And the more you will realize that no matter who is pushing against your power, no matter what system, no matter what resource, no matter what consequence or challenge is pushing on your personal power, that you always have access to it anyways. 
This is the thing about our power. It's a relationship between discomfort and challenges and bad, like negative consequences and things that don't feel good immediately and things that we need to really work for and work towards and getting what we want having our free will acted out, having a desire played out. So there are these two polarities to our power. And the most major problem with humanity today, when it comes to their personal power, is that they are doing it in a way that is juxtaposed to power. So our psychology is programmed to move towards desire and move away from discomfort or suffering. The problem is that much of the most powerful big things in our life come with many challenges, a lot of hard work, um, a lot of overcoming, a lot of figuring out a better way, along a lot of things that don't immediately feel good in the doing of, right? A lot of things in today's world are so instantaneously desirable and pleasurable, but they give a very weak reward they give a very short reward. We need to see the bigger picture that no matter who you are, no matter what you want in this life, it is possible to go about bringing more of what you want. Sometimes depending on who we are, we have to change what we want to understand it better, to break it down more, to make it more obtainable. If we start with aiming for obtainable success and obtainable sources of our desire and obtainable power and obtainable feel good moments in our life, we can grow and we can flourish more and more and more to get next level growth, next level pleasure and a next level life. But we have to start where we are. So if I'm starting from where I am, and I'm looking at the seed that I've planted and I'm like, you'll never become a flower. You're never gonna fruit because you're just a seed. And I don't know where water is, but if I'm the one to figure out that there's a river 20 minutes away and I have to walk to it to go get that water every day, that's what I have to do to make that seed nourished. And this is how power works. Most people get stuck in this phase of wanting something and they get stuck in the state of powerlessness, their connection to powerlessness and their trauma of powerlessness that says, I've never experienced getting what I want. I've never experienced my choice. I've never experienced my free will. I've never experienced bringing about something that made me feel powerful. And if I did, they were probably smaller moments or moments that I'm disconnected from because I'm so attuned and connected to my state of powerlessness. So we can actually work through that powerlessness to help us connect to our power. We can do something like completion process, which is a process created by Teal Swan that will take you through getting into a state of emotional awareness and processing your trauma. You can process your past feelings of powerlessness. You can work with facilitator for this. I myself am one. There are also things like somatic experiencing and parts work that can help you work through the feelings of powerlessness, the feelings of I can't get what I want, the feelings of I'm not capable, the feelings of things just aren't fair. Because this is where humans are, is we're so stuck in powerlessness that we don't realize that any person who ever came into their power started from nothing and became the person to figure it out. No scientist ever just was given the formula to hit the Eureka. No mathematician was ever given the formula to create the desired result that he was wanting. They had to figure it out. They had to start from scratch. They had to start from nothing and they had to want something so badly that they were able to overcome so many challenges with no guarantee that they would ever be the ones to figure it out. But they also did something. They decided they would be the person to figure it out and they gave that thing everything that they had without the guarantee that they ever would be. And instead, they already were the person to figure it out because they decided they were.
and they already started feeding into that reality and that timeline when they did so. So what we must do is we must accept that in order to become successful, in order to become super powerful, we're gonna have to build a better relationship with challenges. We're gonna have to build a better relationship with discomfort. We're gonna have to build a better relationship with things that need effort, that need thought, that need time, that need energy, that need work in order to get that reward. Because we can have instant reward for a instant feel good moment that doesn't last or we can put a lot of energy and time into something that will pay out in the end. Let's give some examples on this. So let's say a farmer plants his seed. Now it takes a lot of watering, a lot of checking in with that plant, a lot of coaxing it to sprout the right way, and a lot of work to, first of all, dig through the soil, make sure it's the right soil, make sure the weather conditions are good, that bugs are not gonna be eating it, that its environment is all set up for it to grow. And it's gonna be a lot of consistent check-ins with that plant. Now, let's take a tomato plant, for example. It is gonna be quite a long time, quite a lot of work before you see any results from that plant. Sure, it's gonna become this cute little sprout. It's gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, but what you want is a tomato. You want a tomato to put in your salad. So you're gonna take all of this work and all of this effort. That tomato plant may take two months before you actually see fruit from it. But once a tomato starts giving fruit, it's gonna fruit for another 20 days, another month, maybe throughout the rest of the season. So every tomato plant is gonna keep growing tomatoes, it's gonna keep getting bigger, and you're gonna get more and more tomatoes. It took a lot of effort with no reward to get there, but it ended up giving you and reaping a lot of results. Let's take boiling water, for example. When you first press the button to turn on the boiling water or you adjust the dial, whatever it may be, you're basically just looking at water. You don't know what temperature that water is unless you touch it and it's just still water. And you could be staring at that water feeling like nothing's happening if you didn't know how long it took for water to boil. This water is a representation of your power or your success or your desires. When you see the first bubble, you're like, okay, something's happening. At least now I have a guarantee that something is happening. And then more bubbles start to come and more bubbles. But as soon as you see that first bubble, you're guaranteed to get another three in not too long a time. And then you get a lot of bubbles. And then you get bigger bubbles and bigger bubbles and bigger bubbles. So this is how boiling water works. And we know how boiling water works and we have a guarantee for how long it's gonna take. But what about your other dreams? What about your other successes? What about your other desires? Where you're putting the effort in, but you don't have necessarily a guaranteed timeline. You don't have a guaranteed success. You are just waiting and you don't know when it's gonna happen, if it's gonna happen, or how fast it's gonna pick up. Usually with success, it works the same way as boiling water, where if you're putting the effort in, eventually you do get that bubble, even if it feels like nothing for a very long time. And once you get the first bubble, other bubbles eventually come. It's the same thing with farming and growing. You're putting effort in, you're planting the seed, the seed is your intention, your desire and something will eventually fruit from it. Now, don't go in blindly thinking, I planted the seed, everything's good, just keep doing what I'm doing the same way. Because when it comes to our desires and when it comes to success and power, getting what we want, there's no simple map, there's no simple formula, there's no simple thing because it's unique to us, it's unique to what we want, it's unique to our circumstances, and it's always changing what's gonna work or not work. Once you plant that seed, now you have to figure out the formula. You have to change the formula. You have to be willing to constantly examine the formula. You have to be constantly willing to examine, okay, do I need to give a different type of fertilizer? Do I need to give a different kind of water? 
Do I need to give a different kind of environment or weather condition to my dream? So that means I may have to change my strategy. I may have to change what I'm feeding it. I may have to change how I'm approaching it. I may have to change the amount of energy I'm giving into it. And that could look so different in so many ways. What we need to know is that if we plant the intention and if we stay with that intention, we are the ones that create the guarantee. And part of that guarantee is releasing resistance and accepting that the results may not look the way that we want. They may not take the time frame that we want, but if we keep moving in that direction and if we decide to keep putting the effort in and if we can decide to become committed to overcoming things and overcoming the discomfort and checking ourselves when we need to and checking our ego when we need to, if we can keep in mind what we want, what our desired outcome is, what we can guarantee ourselves is that us with our own sovereign power are the ones that are going to go about creating that thing. And if that create that thing doesn't come in the way that we at first envisioned it, it may come to us in a different way. It may fruit in a different way than we ever expected, in a better way than we ever expected, in a different timeline than we ever expected. But when you're putting so much effort into your desires and you're putting so much effort into personal growth and you're putting so much effort into creating a better quality of life for yourself, you can guarantee that your sovereign power is capable of birthing new realities into this world. And that is what our personal power and our free will is all about. It's free will to live a life that is of quality. We are dealt all kinds of different hands on this planet. However, the people that are the most successful are the ones that work with the hands that they are dealt, are the ones that accept the hands that they are dealt, and are the ones that commit to the kind of quality of life with their own free will that they want to live and they figure out how that is done. Many people, because of undesirable circumstances, because of trauma, because of situations that aren't in their favor, they revert to a state of powerlessness and they feel like they can never get what they want. They feel incapable. They feel like things aren't fair. They feel like things are not working out for them. This is powerlessness and it is something that we may have the experience of from our childhood when greater things like your parents or circumstances of your childhood were not in your favor. As a child, we have very little capability to bring about what it is we are wanting. And in fact, we were given the message that we are completely reliant on something bigger than us. We need to come back to a state of realization that as an adult, we are capable of so much more. As beings of consciousness, our power is right here. It's in our heart, it's in our gut, and it's connected to the multidimensional universe. And it is not just connected to a multidimensional universe that is based off of the law of attraction, but it is also based off of the physical reality that you are in. You can connect to any dimensional level and have an impact on it. You can do so in the physical world. You can birth things on a ninth dimensional level, but you can also birth things through your physical embodiment. You can create your life and you can cater your life. The choice is up to you, but we have to stop focusing so much on what those instantaneous rewards are and we need to see the greater picture. This is the thing and this is where most people get stuck with their power. Let's say I want to go about creating a different career for myself. Nobody who ever wanted to go about creating their purpose or a different career for themselves was just handed all of the insights on how to do it. They weren't just handed, okay, this is what your purpose is, this is how to do it, and this is how to guarantee career success and financial success and impact on whatever it is you want to have an impact on. Nobody's handed those cards. They are the ones that bring about it. So now we are going to get into my nine steps towards success. Number one, decide what it is you want. You have to create an intention and you have to observe that intention to be open to it changing, to be open to 
what your vision of what it is you're wanting, not actually looking the way you think it looks from where you are. Number two, we have to create a list of sub things that we would actually get out of that thing that we think that we want. What needs would we have met? What reality would we be living in? It's really important to break down what it is you're wanting because a lot of the time desire is not straightforward and it is not clear. And the things that we would actually get from wanting a certain thing are things that are a lot more obtainable than this end goal that we have in mind. When we can start pouring our energy into those subcategories, we can start immediately meeting our needs and working towards what it is that we have been wanting. Number three, we need to decide how badly we want something. Again, it is going to take a lot of discomfort, it is going to take a lot of challenge, and it is going to take a lot of overcoming to actually get things that are worth it in life. And so you have to decide how badly you want it, and you have to decide you are the one to bring about that thing. You have to commit to figure out how to do it, and you have to allow yourself to take the action and the things to figure out the solution to your problem or to your formula and rely on resources outside yourself as well as your own commitment to being the person to bring about the thing that you are wanting. Number four, we need to become conscious of what we are willing to give up. We need to become conscious of what our threshold to discomfort actually is, what it currently is in our life. We need to observe where our threshold to discomfort is, and we need to decide and understand what it would be if we actually gave what it is we we're wanting 100%. It's also important to understand that you may be really comfortable with discomfort in one area of your life and you're completely avoidant to discomfort in another area of your life. So we need to understand what areas of discomfort we're willing to commit to 100%. If we're wanting to create something in one area of our life, whether it be success, whether it be romance, whether it be health, we need to observe where we're currently comfortable with discomfort in our life and where we're currently uncomfortable with discomfort in our life. And we need to see that it is far more uncomfortable to get out of your comfort zone to what you're really good at than to go in the direction of new territory that you're willing to explore. So what is the threshold that you're currently committing to in your life? What are you currently giving to discomfort? And what, what would you have to be actually willing to do in order to completely go towards what it is you're wanting? What is the discomfort you're avoiding? What are the fears? And what is the threshold to those fears that you would have to actually experience to go through that thing? to get out of your comfort zone, to get out of your head with your desire and to go into reality with it. We have to prepare ourselves for failure. We have to prepare ourselves for things not working out the way that we want them to. And we have to be so willing to change our life and to change the way that we live our life in order to get what it is that we are wanting. We have to be prepared to go into this thing without any guarantee that it's gonna work out our way, without any guarantee, without any universal person coming down from the sky to say, yes, you're the one that's gonna make this happen. We have to be the ones to make it happen. We have to be the ones to decide that it's gonna happen for us. And we have to be the ones to go about doing it. We have to be willing to face things that are not ideal. And we have to be willing to face things that are going to stump us, that are gonna make us feel like it's not working out, that are gonna make us feel like everything has failed and it's never gonna happen for us. And we have to be the one to keep going in those moments and to be so focused on what we are wanting that we can overcome those moments and find a way past those challenges and be so willing to bring about what it is we are wanting that we are willing to put in the effort even if we never get the reward and that we are willing to become aware that that reward may change at any given moment. What we're actually meant to do, what we're actually capable of doing, what we're actually meant to have is going to change. I want you to think of an idea in your head. Let's say we're on social media and we're looking at a beautiful sunset. That beautiful sunset 
is just an image. It's just a picture, but you can't taste it yet. You don't feel what it feels like to look at the mesmerizing colors in the sky. You don't feel the wind on your face. You don't smell the things in the air. That's the same thing as our desire. You have a picture in your head. You have no idea what it actually looks like to feel that way, to go into that experience and to commit to it. And so what we need to know is that it's okay. It's okay if things change. It's okay if what we're wanting changes because all you have right now is a picture in your head and that's not reality. And so reality is gonna change, but the desire in and of itself is a lot more basic than what you think the end goal is. And so this is why we have to break it down. We have to break our understanding of our desires down to its core. And then we can start going for the core needs like, okay, uh, let's say I want success. Well, actually what I really want is to feel good about what I'm doing with my life. Okay, well, I don't have to actually get that feeling of what I'm doing with my life by career success. I could actually get that thing by committing to other things in my life as well. Let's say what I'm wanting by a, a certain sense of purpose in my life is to feel like things make sense. What if I can start coming into reality with the part of myself that already makes sense? What if I can start without figuring out what that fulfilled purpose looks like? What if I can start coming to a sense of my life makes sense as it is? My life is enough as it is. My life is in perfect proportion the way that it is. And then I can start building on how would it feel even more or just a little bit more like it's on the path that I want it to. What would I have to change? What is obtainable from exactly where I am now with every resource I have obtainable in my disposal right now to come more closer to a sense of my life is on the right path. My life feels like it's going the way that I want it to go. We need to become comfortable with understanding that our desire is a lot more simple than we make it out to be. It is a lot less specific than we make it out to be. Become aware of all the ways in your life that you're already creating personal power. Write a list of all of the times, all of the moments throughout your entire life that you can possibly remember where you got what it is that you wanted, where you had a sense of personal power, where you overcame a challenge, where you got through something, where you have proof that you have a connection to your personal power and that you did go about making it happen. I hope that this video was helpful for you to create a sense of personal power in your life and go about creating what it is that you're wanting. Remember to subscribe and remember to keep checking back in weekly for free content just like this. You can check out my playlist to other videos on power if you liked this one in the link below and have a great rest of your week. Burning with desire as he runs the race Half light, the moon is always known